Episode 4 of the Polar Triangle opening series. If this is your first visit to this series, make sure you watch the intro video to learn how the series is structured and so that you get the most out of these videos. For those of you who've been following this series, this is already episode 4. And since you are already familiar with the format, we'll be picking up the pace a little bit and at times including our opponent's dice rolls and our opponent's decisions. For this episode, our opponent wins the opening roll with 6-4, and they decide to play checker from their 24 point all the way to their 13 point. We respond with the roll 3-4. What would your move be at our three different match scores? Pause the video. With our 3-4 at 9 away, 9 away, we have two moves that are competing with each other. 20-10 being the best move, and 21-9, a mistake, but within, within the error range, a playable mistake, you could call it, uh, are tied for first. And what this move does, that this move doesn't, is it also provides some coverage for this point out here. Now with this checker here, there's no safe haven for any of our opponent's checkers anywhere in their home field or their outfield. This point also puts some pressure on this point. We can hit it with a two, but now we can also hit it with a nine. Our other moves we would look at, two down from the 13 point, and two up from the back are both mistakes in this position. Our opponent hasn't accomplished too much and they haven't added anything that gives them a threatening attack on our checkers here. So there's no rush to do this. But the splitting of these checkers accomplishes a lot for us. And both splits are close to tie for best. Now at our next match score, four away, two away. And at four away, two away, our emphasis is on building a home board point. 2010. Nine ten, for obvious reasons, emphasizing our home board point. And twenty one nine, which gives us one ways, two ways, three ways, four ways, are all tied for first. A lot of flexibility with a roll like this, as long as we are not playing this move, which is the play on the wrong side of the board for this match score, we can play correctly. All three of the other moves are tied for first. At our last match score, two away, four away, for our emphasis is going to be on making a point in our opponent's home board as fast as we can, 21-10 and 21-9 are tied for first, and they're also tied with this play here. We're threatening to make a point here. Here, we're also putting double pressure on this point and we have full coverage out here, so there's no safe haven for our opponent. They're gonna to have to make a decision, and if they attack these checkers, we can come off the bar and make the point we'd like to make. So, in this case, at two away, four away, we can do either of the splits, or we can pull two up from the back. So our role here in this game is three, four, and the play we're going with is 21-9, our opponent rolls 2-3. And they decide to clean up and make their 11 point. We respond with roll 5-6. How would you play this 5-6 at our three different match scores? Pause the video. So with our 5-6, we have three different options. We can make our three point. We can run this checker all the way out to the 10 point. And we can also take a checker all the way out to the 13 point. Both of these running plays leave only one checker back, which solves a lot of our problems. Now at nine away, nine away, the best play is making the three point. 
What was your opinion of this play? Is it good? Is it tied for first? Turns out that this play is the only move. Running out to the 10, running one to the 13 point, in this position, both those moves are blunders. They're very bad moves. You have a one point board, your opponent has a one point board. You're the first to make a point in your home field and that should be the first thing you look at. But it is, it is, the, it is really the only move in this position. Now at our next match score, four away, two away, even more so. Our emphasis is on home board and making this point is clearer and it's even a larger mistake to do either of the two running plays. Now the more tricky one is two away, four away. What's the best play at two away, four away? The best play is to make the three point. The most straightforward, obvious thing to, here to do is to make the three point. And if you're gonna look at one of the other options, running all the way out to the 10 point is better than running to the 13 point because that checker is very far away from getting attacked. Whereas the checker here could get attacked and blitzed. You could end up in the bar, on the bar here and be in a big, big way. He'd be in trouble especially at two away, four away. But even at two away, four away, the basic principle of making a home board point is still key. Either of the other two options are a half blunder or a full blunder to make. So in this game, we played correctly, we made our three point, and our opponent rolls six one. Now we're gonna look at this from the opponent's point of view. What should the opponent do at our three different match scores from their point of view with the roll 6-1? So put yourself in your opponent's shoes with this 6-1. How should Green play this 6-1 at our three different match scores? Pause the video. So with this roll, there's really only two moves, right? There is the seven point, and there is the five point. They both look good. The five point should look better to you, but it does leave this point out here to be hit. And at nine away, nine away, which would be the same score for both you and your opponent, the correct play is to make the five point. And making the seven point here, even though visually it looks really good, is halfway to blunder. The five point is more important. This is a point, but this is a home board point. The seven point is not a home board point. Now at our next match score, which would be two away, four away. So now green is four away, two away. And at four away versus our two away, their emphasis is on making points in our home board. This still looks good, but now making the seven point is three times as bad. It's a blunder and a half to make the seven point. It's a very bad move. Making the five point is the only play. And at our next match score, where we are four away, two away, our opponent is two away, and their emphasis is to play a style that loses the least amount of gamins. So, now how should it be played? Because now if you make your five point, if the opponent makes the five point, this checker can be hit. This is a little bit of a risk. So the opponent's two away versus our four away, it is still correct to make the five point. Making the seven point here is halfway to blunder, despite the fact that they're leaving a shot. The five point is just too valuable. And it's so much more valuable than the seven point that at almost any match score, you make your five point. Quick review of our game. Our opponent opened with 6-4, ran to the 13 point, and our roll was 3-4. And we can do either of the splits, but not this move, which plays only on one side of the board, and not the other move that plays only on one side of the board. The key thing here 
is the lack of development of our opponent, lack of diversity. This move only does so much. No improvement from the 13 point, no improvement here, no additional attackers for the inside board. So there's no incentive for us to play only on this side of the board or only on this side of the board at nine away, nine away. So two checkers here, two checkers there are pretty big errors. Now at four away, two away, we can do anything, almost anything except for this. And this is why this is so important. Before you even know what your role is, before you even release the dice, you know your emphasis is going to be on your home board. And since the opponent hasn't really given himself too much diversification with this play, it's, it's certainly playable, but creating coverage on both sides of the board while adding a checker to the home board potential or completely playing the way you might expect to play a four away, two away, are all tie for best. You just have to know to avoid that play over there. In this game, we played 21-9. Our opponent played 2-3. And our roll was 5-6 in this position. And look at that. It's a three point. It's a three point. It's a three point. Almost doesn't even matter. You still look. You have to look at your match score before making your decision. But it's a home board point. And this run, you know, if it made this point, it'd be a big be a big difference. But you're not accomplishing what you want to accomplish. And now you have two checkers out here that can be hit. This checker has basically one strategy at this point in the game, and that's to escape, allowing this checker to escape with a tempo. It, this move just doesn't do enough. It's making the three point even at two away, four away. Not even close at any match score. So that's a very important one to learn. And then our opponent rolled 6-1. It was the first time we're looking from the opponent's point of view. Five point, halfway to blunder to make the seven point at nine away, nine away. And we shouldn't be too shocked by this. We're unstacking our overstacked six point. We're making the best point, the point we actually want to make. And when we do make the seven point, we're stripping the eight point. Visually, it looks nice, but we're creating two stripped points. And this position is just better with having spares on all these points. Now, at four away, two away, our opponent is four away, two away. So we're two away. They're making home board points. The five point, still the best, but by three times. It's three times as strong to make this five point. And when the opponent is two away, they're playing a little more cautious, a little more solid. It's still the five point. And this one, if you struggled with this one, if you found yourself making that seven point, you have to remember this. This is not a home board point. This is a home board point. 